the next topic of discussion is going to be program logic control where does this program logic control comes in a big way in all automation systems all uh, cnc systems rapid prototyping systems inspection systems you will have program logic controller in the mcu part whatever we were seeing dlu or we were trying uh, looking at the digital uh, input then we were talking about control uh, data so in that control data part we will have lot of uh, involvement of program logic controller which is otherwise called as plc when the automation was done in hard way by using cams and by using geneva mechanisms by using stoppers so we were doing it everything on hard then the next advancement came little bit of soft in the soft we would like we have this program logic controller so here you will write a program which is basically logic based and then you will fit into a controller and execute the operation that is why program logic controller is also called as brain of automation system in the content today we will see programming logic controller plc what is plc what are all the major components of a plc is it a single box or is there anything inside the box there, those things are called as major components of plc various input output modules when you talk about a box so the box should have an input and it should have an output so what are all the input output modules which are there for a plc then today plc is also called as a computer so now we also talk about different types of memories in plc next we will see very primitive how is the working of plc happening at the last we will see what is the programming software which is used which is nothing but a ladder logic diagram ladder logic diagram will be used ladder means what ladder is something like this so you will try to have logics built in this ladder so that's what is ladder logic diagram and then we will see some examples like using and command or command and not gates in the logic this is only an introductory lecture of plc there is a big ocean of knowledge behind this plc that i leave it to the participants to acquire as and when it is needed so we will see only the primitive part and without plc you cannot run a flexible manufacturing system you cannot run a sims environment to a large extent what is programmable logic controller plc a digitally operating electronic apparatus which uses a programming memory for the internal storage of instructions for implementing specific functions such as logic sequence timing counting arithmetic to control through digital or analog module various types of machines or processes so you can see here it will it is talking about programming memory internal storage so why internal storage when you write a program if it is internally stored you can call the program and start executing it and when you start doing it it is like a library function what is available in your softwares for a specific function the specific function can be on off can be counting can be clocking the memory for example when we try to do in microwave oven so what we do we set a timer or in a bread toaster we set a timer it is spring loaded so it unwinds and once it comes to stand still 0 0 it tries to disconnect the connectivity between the uh, live wire and the instrument so here it is spring load so you can also convert the spring load into timer so logic sequencing timer for example sequencing is also very important as and when one activity is over there will be a set of logics let's take a simple example of your bathroom flush whatever we use as and when the water gets drained the first sequence of operation will be there has to be a in water getting filled into the tank and simultaneously the ball which is floating 
or to indicate the level will also start moving up and up and up. Moment the water tank is full, the input is shut. How is it shut? It is shut because the ball which floats is connected to a lever, that lever in turn closes it. And when we operate a flush, we just operate the button and the water gets drained and the float starts sinking down. Here you see there are a sequence of operation. So, the sequence has to be maintained one after the other after the other. In a flush, it is all a mechanical system. But in reality, in a CNC machines, there are several things which are electronically controlled. So, this electronically control also has to be established in a sequential fashion, one after the other after the other. Okay. So, that is what is sequencing. Then next is timing. So, you do an operation and wait. For example, all the process industry look for timing control. When we talk about packaging industry, they talk about counting. When I recently visited a biscuit manufacturing company, the biscuits are produced in thousands and then from there it has to be sorted to 5 and once 5 biscuits come, it has to be packed. So, now counting of the 5 biscuits and then establishing a sequence of paper wrapping around it. So, counting is one thing which is used in PLC and we can also do arithmetic to control for example, AND logic or logic or not logic to control through the digital and analogous module. The various types of machining machines and machining process use it. It is exhaust PLC finds its major application in process industry as well as in CNC industry. The leading brands of PLC are Texas Instruments, they have one, Allen Bradley, then General Electric has it, Westinghouse, Siemens, Toshiba, Fanuc, Mitsubishi, all these things are leading brand of PLC which are used. And this PLC you will not be able to see from outside, it will be kept inside a box and that box will, uh, will control the entire machine. So, these are all some of the leading, few leading, not all the leading, few leading. And here I have just put 1, 2, 3, 4, it does not mean the ranking of them. When we talk about the major components of a PLC, you will have a power supply. This power supply can be AC or DC. Generally, today we what we do is we try to use only AC power supply because DC conversion there is a huge amount of losses. So, we will use a AC power supply for it and here you will operate it from 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, 120 volts and 240 volts. So, you can choose depending upon the power supply, you can choose the rating. So, here is a power and then this power supply is attached to a processor. A processor will host the program. So, a processor will establish the sequence of operation. So, whether it is following the sequence and in the sequence what is to be done, it will be done. So, for this processor to follow a sequence, we use a program. So, there is a programming device which is fitted on to the processor. This can be a laptop or it can be a standalone USB port, you write a program and then plug it in, processor starts working. So, this is a programming device. So, you will have input and output devices. Input device if you see are from different types of sensors. For example, presence, absence, push button, contact switch, limit switch, etcetera, etcetera. The output will be activating a solenoid, activating a drive system, raising an alarm and then also trying to establish some contacts between the system. These are all the possible outputs. So, if we ask what are the major components, one is power supply, two is the processor, three is the programming, four is the uh, input module and five is the output module. So, the PLC will be attached in a CNC machine, PLC will be attached to the drives. For example, switching on a motor, switching off a motor, all the miscellaneous commands whatever we used will be actuated by this output module. The power supply provides, provides the voltage needed to run the primary PLC components. Input output modules provide signals, conversation and isolation between the internal logic level signal inside the PLC and the fields 
high level signals. So, input output devices are basically for in and out. Processor provides intelligence to command and govern the activity of the entire PLC system is done by a processor. Like a computer we have a processor, in PLC also we have a processor. Programming device used to enter the desired program that will determine the sequence of operation and control of process equipments or driven machines. The input output interface section of a PLC connects it to the external field devices. The external field devices are sensors, limit switches etcetera. The main purpose of the input output interface is to condition the various signals received from or sent to the external input and output devices. Conditioning, conditioning of various signals. Various signals can be light based, can be sound based, can be presence, absence, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. The input module converts signals from discrete or analog input device to logic level acceptable to the PLC processor. So, I, as I told you in the CNC itself, you will have digital signal and you will have analog signal. Depending upon the digital or analog output, so, you will try to set the logic level and get. See, the output modules convert signal from the processor or to levels capable of driving the connected discrete or analogous output devices. So, input output module. So, you can DC input module. We are discussing about DC. Today, you also have AC. So, these are input. So, current limiting resistor used to drop the voltage to logic level. So, we use a current limiting resistor. Then we have a opto isolator is needed to prevent voltage transient from damaging the processor. We have a opto isolator then helps to reduce the effect of electric noise. So, here you have to have a perfectly controlled noise. You should not have any noise along with the signal. So, once it is there if the noise and signal are not so is if the S by N ratio is not so great. So, then what will happen? The PLC immediately activates or deactivates the uh, sensor and you might lead to malfunctioning. So, we have to make sure that the conditioning of the signal which comes into the processor is of control. This helps reduce the effect of electrical noise which is done by the opto isolator. Then finally, it goes to buffer, filter, hysteresis circuit. So, these are from the input devices which are nothing but sensors limit switches etcetera etcetera. So, here it goes to the processor because it gets the signal from here and this signal converts into yes no level because PLC works on digital. So, here you have only two levels yes or no. Okay. So, that has to be regulated. So, used to drop the voltage to logic level. So, maybe if you get a 12 volts, we will try to step it down to 5 volts such that the processor can start working with the signal. AC input module, an AC input module you have a rectifier, a resistor network. So, the rectifier's function is to convert the DC AC input to DC signal and drop the voltage to logic level. So, here we did not have that, we had only resistor network, but here you will have a converter which does. Then you will have an opto isolator, the same function what it does and then you will have buffer, filter, hysteresis circuits etcetera. So, AC, DC output devices, we saw two input devices, now we will saw AC, DC output devices. So, here from the processor, we will try to take a TTL signal and then send it to a opto isolator. TTL signal is a transient logic. So, here we will try to see whether um, it is plus 5 minus 5. Then we put a opto isolator. So, prevents voltage transient from damaging the processor. So, it also helps to reduce the effect of electrical noise the same function and then we try to attach it to an amplifier relay triad or a transistor or a existor is done and it tries to amplify and then give it to the output because the output needs higher voltage signal. So, we have to amplify. So, first we have to regulate it, bring it to a lower level, processor works and then we have to jack it back and send it to the real applications. The different types of I O circuits, 
pilot duty output, uh, the outputs of this type typically are used to drive high current electromagnetic loads such as solenoids, relays, valves and motor starters. So, what is a solenoid? On off switch is solenoid, okay. valve open close, motor start stop, we have a motor starter circuit today, so where we need a very high current. So, pilot duty output is where the output of this type typically uses to drive a high current electromagnetic loads. These loads are highly inductive and exhibits a large in rush current, sudden current. Pilot duty outputs should be capable of withstanding an in rush current of 10 times the rated load for a short period of time without failure. See the surge in current. So, the surge in current should be so high such that it is used to, to start a starting torque, a very high torque it starts and then it just regulates and the starting torque which if you do it mechanically you need to apply so much of force, but in an electrical circuit starting torque is taken care by the current. So, we give a very high current. So, general purpose output these are usually low voltage low current which is used inside a, a CNC machine automation systems low voltage low current and are used to drive indicating lights and other non inductive loads. For example, today you have a smartphone through a smartphone you are able to control the intensity of the light switching on of the light switching on of the AC all these things. All these things can happen provided you have a proper general purpose output circuit available. Noise suppressors may or may not be included on this type of the module. Noise suppressors. So, that is what I said when you start working on all this low signal uh, voltages it is S by N ratio very important. N should be as small as possible, S should be as large as possible. So, we are nowadays working on reducing the N such that you get a proper S so, it can be on and off. Discrete input, the circuit of this type are used to sense the status of limit switches, push buttons and other discrete sensors. Circuits of this type are used to sense the status of limit switches, push buttons and other discrete sensors. So, it is yes, no. Noise suppressors is of greater importance in preventing false indication of input turning on and off because of the noise. So, this is what I said if the S by N ratio is, is close to 60 percent or 50 percent then you will get a false yes signal, yes signal or a no signal false which is not correct. So, that is what we are talking about discrete input general purpose output and we talked about pilot duty outputs. There is a need today to work on analogous input output also. The first three what we saw was discrete, now we are trying to see the analog input output. The circuit of this type sense or drive analogous signal, analogous signal or continuous signal because for a period of time I would like to discretize to my requirement. So, in that way I would like to play with the analogous signal. So, the circuit of this type sense or drive analogous signal. Analogous in, inputs come from devices such as thermocouple, strain gauge, pressure sensors that provide a signal voltage or current that is derived from a process variable. So, the analogous work in a typical range of 4 to 20 milliamps, please note it is milliamps. When we talked about high current, it is all in amps. Here we are talking about milliamps, the operating voltage is 0 to 10. The analog output can be used to, to drive devices such as voltmeter, XY plotter, servo motor, drives and valves through the use of transducers. Here is a simple example of a bathroom closet we gave. So, that works on a level sensor and then opening and closing of the valves transducers. The standard analogous output signals will be 4 to 20 millivolts. So, input is 4 to 20, output will also be 4 to 20 the output can be 0 to 5 or 0 to 10 volts which in turn goes and activates your drive. Next we will see on processor, the processor module contains the PLC microprocessor, its 
supporting circuitry and its memory system. So, your processor will also have a memory system. Memory you can have permanent and you can permanent and you can have temporary. So, temporary you can have this through a RAM space or you can use it through a USB or a hard disk possible. Right. So, memory system is also part of a PLC processor. So, PLC microprocessor, it is supporting circuitry and the supporting circuitry is the are the interfaces with input and output and other things. Right. And then you will also have memory system. The main function of the microprocessor is to analyze data coming from the field sensors through input module, make decision based on the user defined control program and return back the signal through the output module to the field device. The field sensors can be switches, flow, level indicator, pressure, temperature, transmitter, etcetera. The output devices can be motor, valve, solenoid, lamps and audible devices. So, all these things are output devices and sensors, field sensors are going to be switches, flow, flow indicator, level indicator flow is nothing but the discharge Q. Level indicator is the level, the level as against a linear scale it compares right. And nowadays it need not compare it with a linear scale, it in turn is, uh, is in turn controlled by a, a rotary motion. So, where the lever moves up and down it is controlled on a circular or a rotary rather than a linear scale. They are reducing the size of a sensor. Then for pressure, temperature transmitters. The memory system in the in the processor module are of two parts, a system memory and an application memory. System memory is a ROM space and application memory is something like your RAM space. Please uh, try to understand, I am giving only analogy, please do not take it one to one sense. A system memory and an application memory, two memories are there. So, input output circuit if you see a CPU will be there, a system will be there, you will have a user ladder diagram will be there. Then there will be a working memory space. Working memory is used for counting of events, time, etcetera. Okay. So, that is the working memory register. So, whatever gets from the ladder diagram. So, if there is a flow of one data signal, so that will go get recorded here and it keeps on adding. So, from a CPU, you will have input, you have flags, and you have outputs. Input is attached to the input module, output is attached to the output module and flag is a place where in between these two certain operations happen. So, this is how it looks like PLC, this is a PLC which you see these are the memory which are attached. So, these when you talk about input output, so input device is a button, this is a push button, this is a toggle switch something like that. So, input signals you will have a PLC, then PLC in turn connects to the contractor, a contractor in turn starts a motor or it tries to switch on a bulb. So, these are the inputs, all the processing information is done in the PLC which follows a ladder, ladder logic diagram. This is a programming language, so which is used, all these things happen here and once it says yes, if the contractor is on, so this contractor in turn switches off the motor. So, here you can also attach it to this is high current, this is of a medium current or of a low voltage. So, PLC size, there are three sizes of PLC, it covers units with up to 128 input output and memories of up to 2 kilobytes, 128 inputs. So, as in a CNC machine we can have a small PLC size and use. These PLCs are capable of providing simple to advanced levels of machine control, small, medium, they have up to 2048, look at it, 2048 input output devices and memories up to 32 KB. The large scale, the most sophisticated unit of the PLC family, they can go up to 8192. 8192 input output devices. Think of it a robust machine. So, if you take any moving locomotive moving devices, for example, pock lane, your, uh, your driller, okay, a ground driller. So, all these things have lot of hydraulics with it. Apart from 
the normal locomotion which is given by the engine, you have other so many other hydraulic systems which come. Almost in all these things we will try to have a PLC which tries to control. So, the memory is going up to 750 kilobytes, today the memories have gone even to gigabytes. It has gone to gigabytes, can control individual production process or entire plant. So, this we are talking about processing plant. Processing plant you will have so many sensors if you take a cement factory or if you take a steel mill, if you take a food processing unit. So, if uh, they have steel, petroleum, all these things have a huge processing facility there and here you will have a huge, a large PLC which is installed which can uh, interact with 8192 input output devices. Without PLC you cannot have a CNC machine which in turn can talk to a computer. The programming devices, there are three types which is handheld like your manual entry in the CNC machine, you have handheld units with LED and LCD display, you have a desktop type with a CRT display, then you have a compatible computer terminal. The memory devices are volatile, a volatile memory is one that loses its stored information when the power is removed or when you press a reset button. Every momentarily loss of power will erase any information stored and programmed on the volatile memory chip. So, that is why in PLC you will also try to have a UPS attached to the machines, so that it tries to give supply for some more time before it is getting shut off. So, this is very important to avoid the volatile. Common types of volatile memory are RAM which is random access memory, read write indicates that the information stored in the memory can be retrieved or read while write indicates the user can program or write information into the memory. So, this read write is provision is given in the RAM. Non-volatile has the ability to retain stored information when the power is removed. This is a ROM space. So, this is generally basic functions a remote accidentally or intentionally. These memories do not require battery backup. The common types of non-volatile are ROM read only indicates the information stored in the memory can be read only and cannot be changed. The information in ROM is placed thereby by the manufacturer for the internal use and operations. The other type of non-volatile PROM, EEPROM, EEPROM, so PROM is programmable read only memory, E is erasable programmable read only memory like your computers, EEPROM is electrically erasable, so you give a plus 5 volts, you give a minus 5 volts, whatever it is, you can try to remove all the programs. So, EE from is also available in the PLC. When we talk about PLC operations, the read all field input device via the input interface, executes the user program stored in application memory, then based on whatever control scheme has been programmed by the user turn the field output devices on or off or perform whatever control is necessary for the processor application. So, what we are trying to say is you have a PLC, you have in input and you have output. So, input signal is given, so there is a program which executes it and after the execution is over it tries to give an output signal. This process of sequentially reading the input executes the program in memory and updates the output is also is known as scanning. Just an analogy, let us assume that you are going in a car and you are driving at 80 kilometers per hour. So, there is a clean road, you are keep going in the road, right. So, every time what happens, by and large involuntarily your eye starts scanning from this extreme end to this extreme end. So, it keeps on scanning like this and you keep doing it. Your scanning speed will be very high. So, you will quickly scan within few microseconds or within a second from left extreme to right extreme you will go. Assume that there is a object falling from the top at this point. So, here what happens? Your previous scan was over from here 
and then what you do is you try to scan from the next port. So, when you try to scan it from the next point, you try to hit at this portion, your scanning goes and then it will get out of this level. Right? Suppose, when you are trying to scan at this portion, this portion, if I erase and remove this object. So, then next time your memory what will be stored here is your memory will assume that there is an object, it will slow down, gives little more thought for what is going on there and then it will try to sweep. So, what is this? This is nothing but a sequential scanning. So, that is what is told here. This process of sequentially reading the input. So, what I am trying to say is suppose you have 100 inputs here and you are somewhere close to the 75th input and let us assume 74th input has changed its status. This cannot go back and check the 74th status. It will come up to 100 and then go back and scan from 1, come to 74 and then record the transient of the sensor data and record it. The process of sequentially reading the input, executing the program in memory. Okay. So, whatever is there in your memory that is executed and you try to update this memory, the outputs and then store it in a memory and then this in turn will be communicated to the output. So, this process is called as scanning. So, here in PLC you should remember it is sequential scanning. So, while PLC is running, the scanning process includes the following four phases. I will draw the forces which are repeated continuously as individual cycles of operation. So, let us put four phases. So, phase 1, it is read, input, scan. Okay. Phase 2, is program execution. Phase 3 is diagnostic slash communication. Phase 4 will be output scan. Okay. From the output scan, it goes here. So, now from here to here it goes, from here to here it goes, from here to here it goes. Okay. So, this is what is the scanning what we are talking about. While the PLC is running, the scanning process includes the following four phases, reading, executing the program, recording and then output, this output activation. So, which are repeated continuously as individual cycles of operation. Phase 1 is the input status scan. A PLC scan cycle begins with a CPU reading the status of the input. Phase 2, logical solve or program execution. The application program is executed using the status of input. Then phase 3, logic solve and program execution. Once the program is executed, the CPU performs diagnostics and communication tasks. Phase 4 is output status scan and output status scan is then performed whereby the stored output values are sent to the actuator and other fields of input devices. The cycle ends by updating the output. So, it will always go from phase 1, 2, 3, 4. It cannot go from 4 to 2 or 3 to 1. It follows this sequence. Once the output is done, it puts everything the, in the memory and the memory it is registered from the memory it goes to the output. So, areas of application, the most commonly used areas are going to be processing industry. So, as I told you it is manufacturing and machining industry, food and beverages, metal forming, all automations wherein required for primary processor we can do. Uh, it can be used, automation is exhaustively used in power industry, mining industry and petrochemical industry, PLC is exhaustively used. Even today, the need for a PLC programmer is huge. 
a smart PLC programmer has a huge weightage or gets a huge demand for today. Till now, we were talking about wired and the latest development has become wireless. When we are talking about IoT, the last lecture of in this course, we will try to see what is IoT, what is industry 4.0. So, you will understand more of this concept, but as of now, you should understand today, the PLCs have started communicating in a wireless mode. So, a remote platform is there, so you do not have to wire it. So, the remote platform, the data is got to a PLC, PLC executes and transmits it to a wireless modem. Wireless modem in turn communicates with the machine or it communicates with the other PLC or other system. Uh, maybe it can be a computer where the server is for loading and unloading of devices possible. So, platform, this platform is connected to PLC, then PLC to a wireless mode. Then here also you will have a PLC attached to a wireless mode and this in turn is attached to a PC. This PC can be an uh, ERP software or it can be a central PC where the entire factory automation is controlled. So, this is the latest development of PLC architecture today. You can see a PLC live working example. So, you here an object is from here moving, this can be a vibratory bowl and it tries to assess the part and moment it assess the part, it tries to assess can be in terms of dimensions, assess can be uh, in terms of uh, some color whatever it is. So, it is moved from the vibratory bowl and then it is it looks into the color and from the color it gets this uh, arm, robo arm or just a normal mechanical arm gets activated and this mechanical arm in turn pushes it into a store. Here we have taken an example of a metal, glass and a plastic which is very commonly used in developed countries to sort out. See in developed countries they try to uh, take recycled objects. So, when they take a recycled objects for example, a tin, a beer tin, a beer bottle and a plastic bottle. So, what they do is they just dump it in a garbage hopper and from the garbage hopper it is passed through a conveyor, it sorts and it activates and then it gets collected. Okay. This operation is done using a PLC. So, here it counts, here it sensors, it is activated, this fellow executes. So, the output sensor is the execution, input sensor is nothing but the processing the color or the material. What devices does a PLC interact with? It interacts with input relays, they, these are connected to the output outside world. So, PLC input is also outside world, input, this is output, this is also output world where we can see, this is also output world where we can see. So, these are connected to the outside world, they physically exist and receive signal from switches and sensors. So, these are sensors, switches etcetera, etcetera. Typically, they are not relays, but rather they are transistor. So, they are transistors. So, in relays are there. So, it comes input. These are all input. So, if you take a PLC, this is all input side. These are all output side. Okay. Counter. These again do not physically exist. Counter. Moment I say counter, counter need not be a, a box. A counter can be a small space or it can be a memory space where counting can happen. These again do not physically exist, they are stimulated counter and they can be programmed to count pulses. Okay. So, here physical counter is not there, so it is all in inside a memory and uh, by an on and off of an event it counts, how many times the door has opened. Okay. Uh, for example, when you move in a train, the uh, the train what they have is they have a sequential inspection of the bathroom cleaning and then uh, coach cleaning. Rather than that depending upon the number of users if you do then you can optimize the cleaning time and the water usage. So, here what you have to do is every time when the door is open and closed all you have to do is you have to count. So, if the count is more than 50 then the time has come for cleaning. Okay. So, here the count 50 times counting will be done in a PLC in a memory itself. 
So, these are simulated counter and they can be programmed to count out pulses. Typically, these counters can be up counter, down counter or it can be up down counter. Up counter means it goes from 0 to 100, down counter means it starts from 100 to 0. You can have a mixture of both. They, uh, since they are stimulated, they are limited in their counting speeds. Okay. So, counter is a device with which is internal, these are input uh, relays. Then we have timer, these uh, timers also do not uh, don't exist in physical form like a clock, it is inbuilt inside the PLC. Uh, so, here what happens, it counts internally, there may be in many varieties and increments. The most common type is an on delay type. The other includes off delay and both retentive and non-retentive types. The increment vary from 1 millisecond to 1 second. The output relay, these are connected to the outside world. They physically exist and send off on off signals to a solenoid, lights, etc. They can be transistor, relay, triags depending upon the model chosen. Data storage. The, typically, there are registers assigned to simply storing devices. They are usually used as temporary storage for math and data manipulation. Let us now see the PLC configuration. So, PLC configuration which we have already seen, but now I will put all the bits and piece information into one block diagram. So, you have a CPU, you have a memory, you have a output circuit you have a input circuit, this in turn is attached with this is data storage. So, all the program which is executed one zeros will be there. This is the output relay and here you have a timer, you have a counter, you have internal utility relay and then you have a input so, these are the 6 uh, blocks which are there in a PLC. So, you will have all these things plus these things inside. A. So, you see a counter there, a timer there, a data storage output, internal utility array. So, what are the advantages of PLC? PLCs uh, since uh, earlier we used to have lot of wire connections, now the PLC uses less wire. The wires between devices and uh, relay contacts are done in the PLC program, easier and faster to make changes. So, since it is program based, it is very easy. Troubleshooting aids making program easier and reducing downtime. Reliable components may also uh, make these like to operate for years before failure. So, PLC uh, gives you a major advantage, that is why it is completely trying to remove wires. What are the different types of PLC program? We have graphical language 3, one is called as ladder logic diagram most widely used, function block diagram, instructions composed of operation block that transforms into signals. Then you will have sequential function chart, series of steps and transitions from one state to the next. So, these three are very commonly used and out of that ladder logic diagram is the most common one. So, the next one if you do not like to use graphical form like in CNC you did not like to go for G codes and M codes, you have a APT. So, like that you will also have textual based languages, instruction list, low level computer language, structured text. So, which is a high level computer language, these are also used to program a PLC controller. These two are very important function block diagram and sequential function chart. Function block diagram, instruction composed of operation blocks that transform input signals, sequential is series of steps and transitions. What is a ladder logic diagram is otherwise called as the ladder. A ladder logic program has a ladder look 
of it. The sides of the ladder are the power rails on the left and ground rails on the right. The rungs of the ladder consist of virtual relay components. So, for example, I will try to draw a larger logic diagram. So, this is the power rail on one side, this is the ground rail on the other side and then you have Okay. This is called as a rung okay, R U N G and this is a virtual virtual relay component 1, virtual relay component 2 and virtual relay component 3. Okay. A ladder logic diagram, a ladder logic program has a ladder look which is like a ladder look. The sides of the ladder uh, are powered rail on left and ground rail on right and then these two rails are connected by rungs and these rungs will have virtual real uh, relay components. So, here you just put some components virtually and then try to say whether you have to only say the status on or off and then accordingly we will try to see the output. So, in the program we can write uh, using normally open and normally closed. So, I said no, in the rung you can put normally open, normally closed and then you can write it. So, this is power, power rail, this is the ground rail, this is a rung and where you have virtual uh, relay components and here are some sensors where we talk about normally open and normally closed. Okay. So, this is how we construct it. So, here again you have to declare this, this one for example, you say 0, 0, 1 and then in, in the input you will say 0, 0, 1 uh, switch is nothing but which connects it to a limit switch which is in the door. So, you have to have all these datas. So, the power flows from these contacts when they are closed. The normally open is true when the input or the output status bit controlling the contact is 1. The normally closed is true when the input and output status bit is controlled with 0. You can have normally open and normally closed. For example, in a light sensor assisted taps, normally it will be in a closed position and uh, so no water comes. When you try to cut the lights and put your hand in between, then this becomes open and you get water supply. The same analogy can be done vice versa also. So, it is normally open state and this is normally closed state. This is put in a rung and several of these things are put together to form a ladder logic diagram. A coil represents relay that are energized when power flow to, to them. When a coil is energized, it causes a corresponding output to turn on by changing the state of the status bit controlling the output to 0. That same output status bit may be used to control normally open or normally closed contact anywhere in the program. So, are you able to understand coils represent relay, these are coils. So, you can have normally closed and normally open and then this can be in turn attached to a coil. Coil represents relay that are energized when power flow to them. So, if you change the status this can be closed. Okay. When a coil is energized, it causes a corresponding output to turn on by changing the status of the status bit controlling uh, the output to on. You can also have boxes. Boxes represents various instructions or functions that are executed when the power flows to the box. Some of these functions are timer, counter and other math operations. So, if you want to uh, put a timer if you want to put a timer, if you want to put a counter or if you want to do a addition or AND operation or OR operation or NOR operation or NOT operation, we try to use this box. So, in a ladder logic diagram, these are the symbols used normally open contact switch 
relays and other on off devices we give this, when normally closed we say this, when output load such as motor, lamps these are for inputs, these are output loads motor, lamp, solenoid, uh, alarm etc. we put this and we put a box for timer, we put this for counter. So, now whatever I said in this prior we have seen, we have seen input, output then these are boxes and operation. This is how you try to draw a device, so which is it has two in and one out. Okay. So, the control signal in 1 is 0, control signal in 2 is 0, the output will be 0. So, control signal will be 0, B will be 1 and the output will be 0. If control signal is 1 and B is also 1 and then now you will try to get a output as 1. So, now what you will do is you will write this program in this form, whatever we did here we will write it in one rung information A input, B input, C is the coil or C is here coil you get the output. Each rung or the network on a ladder program represents a logical operation. In the rung above both input A and B must be true in order for C to be true. So, this entire table now is represented in this one rung and several of these rungs are attached. So, A and B in turn can be attached to a uh, field uh, sensor which is giving input to the signal. What we saw here is for AND operation, we will also see for NOR operation. NOR operation if A is 0, B is 0, C will be 0, if A is 1, B is 0, C will be 1, if B is 1, A is 0, C will be 1 and if A and B are 1, then C will be 1. So, you can see this. So, this is nothing but a OR signal. So, this can be represented in a rung form like this A, B, OR form. If it is AND, it will be together. If it is rung OR type, then the rung will have like this. In the above rung, it can be seen either A OR B. If it is true, then C will be true. You can also have a NOT operation, if A is 0, B will be 1 or C will be 1, if A is 1, C will be 0. So, here you can see that A is normally closed and you put this, if the rung above, it can be seen that if input is true, then the output is true 0 or when input is 0, the output will be 1. So, this is for NOT, not. so we saw AND or not, three logics we saw. Like this, if you can put ladder by ladder by ladder, by rung by rung by rung in a ladder diagram, then you can try to control. Today, we are talking of controlling 8129 input output devices. Let us take half of it, somewhere close to 4000 in can be done. So, the ladder logic diagram will run for 1000 rungs today. To summarize what we saw in a PLC. Uh, PLC we saw what is a program logic uh, controller, what are all the major components of a PLC, what is input output modules, what are the different types of memories in a PLC, how does a PLC work, what is a ladder logic diagram, how to develop a ladder logic diagram, ladder for AND or NOT was done. Thank you.